Hi folks, welcome. It is the 26th, 26th of February. February, no, June. <laughs> June, June, yeah. So what am I doing? Yeah, I've got here just some some tankards. These are still um, well, they're past leather hard stage, but they're not really dry yet, as you can see. They're still. So what I want to do, it's about the right time now to to dip those. I want so I'm dipping them here in some iron oxide slip. So that's one job I've got to do, and then I've also got to do some uh, over there. Those some pictures here, which we will do, and then a couple of things over there. So we've got a bit of work we've got to get on with. So let's do it. Let's get this tripod set up here. So yeah, these these tankards. Um, that's about right, isn't it? Something like that, give it a good stir. This is um, natural red iron oxide slip. It's 75% uh, it's red clay and 25% red iron oxide. It's not actually the same slip that I use for, for decorating. I've sort of switched over doing my decor decorating to using synthetic red iron oxide. Um, but I've continued to use this, I've already had it made up. It's not so good, the natural for um, for decorating with. But for slip, it works fine. Okay, probably next time I make it up I'd probably uh, use the synthetic bit. In all honesty, right, just getting a jug and some water and a sponge because it's always good to have that. In case we make a mess, it's very easy with iron oxide slip to, um, you know, make a spillage and then it's sort of, it's better to wipe it away while it's still. Uh, wet before it dries. Okay, so what I'm going to do is these are only going to be slipped on the outside and then these are going to have a scrofito, they will have a scrofito decoration. Alright, let's just get so it's just a case of going down and I just hold it there. Yeah, just a few secs and then lift it up. Just give it a chance for the the drops to run off and then that's it. So these are not double dipped or anything like that, just just on the outside. What I'll do with these is they'll, I'll have to let them dry off so that they're, they're, I'm able to, to pick them up because what I will then do is take a, a tool and do a, a scraffito design, scratching through the slip back, back to the clay underneath. Now what we've got to do is wash hands. <laughs> like that. Yeah, I'm getting ready for a workshop this weekend. Uh, I wanted to get these mugs in there. I'm gonna have a firing tomorrow in my small kiln. So that reminds me actually, got to, um, 
we might as well just do that together. I've got a, I've got to get a, a cone ready. So for that, I just take a piece of clay like that. This is pure rocket science, isn't it? Setting up a cone. So then I've got down in here in a in a in a bag. I've got some um, some sand. This is just it's just uh, play sand. Basically, what I do is just take the, that little nub of clay and just you know, just roll it in that in that sand there, a bit like that. Till it's nicely sanded up, and then um, God, I can smell it. There's been a skunk around here last night. I can. I came in here this morning. Thinking, Gosh, what's that smell? Something burning. It felt like someone's burning garbage. I thought it was my neighbour again. These are cone. Uh, cone 10. Whoa, getting pretty low on those actually. So you'll notice with a cone that it's 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 kind of the flat on the bottom. What I do is it's basically just take a piece a bit of that clay that you've sanded up and then I just roll a little sort of small small sausage then I hold put that so it's right on the f at the right because it's set at the right angle you see so then I just wrap around the base the All right, so and then here, just join that like that. Hold it down like that. That's what I do. This piece of clay, chuck it out. All right. Now, next, yeah. Then what I do is. Um, can basically just prick it, you know, with a sharp object. So you look something something like that. Alright? So bear in mind that that there you respect the angle that the cone Has been how it's been made, and that will set it in the kiln at the right angle. Okay, so that's that. So we just put that there. Okay, quickly now. I've got to zoom over to the other back over here. Um, yeah, I've got a well, these guys here on the. I've already done those, so they should. Get ready, have a bit of uh, wood ash spray around those. So now I've got some these pitchers over here. I want to dip some of these. You've, uh, you saw me making these. So some of them, yeah, this one I did, it's got like a like a faceted uh, around the base. There. It's got the um, little detail over the handle. So some of these I kind of prepared for yeah. the remaining ones I'll put out and outside to dry. Now I've got over here another the camera there. Sorry about all the moving around folks. So 
So here I've got a glaze which is, it's actually what I call crocodile, uh, which is, um, a red, um, 50% wood ash and 50%, 50% wood ash and 50% uh, red clay. See, red clay you can use quite a lot, and if you go outside here and you dig down about so far, you will come across a clay. It's a sort of, it's not really red, I'd describe it more like a yellow ochre colour. And, but it's a low temperature clay, it's not, it's not suitable. It's not suitable for throwing pots out of, really. Uh, but it is, it is, it it can, it can be used a, a, as an ingredient in a glaze. So, but this this actual glaze I'm I'm working with here. I'm staring up. This is just terracotta, regular terracotta, low temperature clay, and wood ash. So. What I've got to do here, these are of course raw glazed, so what we're going to do is get myself a pouring jug, which is here, and a little saucer. These lids that come are kind of useful for putting a... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glaze the inside of this first. So we're just going to pour in, swirl it around and now pour it out like that. Right here on the very top of the rim so I don't get a double thickness when I come to do the... I just wipe it... I don't really wipe it back, I just wipe it off the top. There, and then I give it a couple of sprays of water uh, uh, from the water sprayer here. So I'm putting some moisture on the outside of the pot because it's got a lot of wetness now on the inside, and I want to avoid cracking. Although I don't think, because these are still fairly, fairly damp, I don't think that's going to be an issue actually. So right here, just just wipe like that. I don't know if you can see if you can see that. It's I haven't really wiped it down inside, it's just literally wiped off the top. And that's what you need to do it because it when you come to put the next layer of glaze, which is going to be on the on the outside here. Um, you don't want it to take on a too thick right on the top there. Okay. Uh, you know, doing raw glazing is a little is a little bit more complicated than if you were glazing bisqueware because you're doing this. It's a little bit more involved at this stage. But, so a little bit of spray on the outside to equalize the, it's a precaution, let's say, that I do. Yeah, I was saying about this, this glaze, that, uh, that it's the wood ash from my firebox, my, fire, my stove, my wood stove, and uh, that red clay, but in, in this particular bucket here, I've added about a third of a teaspoon of cobalt oxide because I'm experimenting with this glaze and trying to get a uh, just a. I, I just thought if I it would add a nice 
effect to the glaze just with a bit of cobalt and not, not too much. It's nice to use one glaze as a base, a very simple glaze like this which is easy to apply, it's very easy to make up and um, and you can use that as a base and then add other oxides to it to give yourself a, a, a different result. Okay, that's done. Back there, right, I've got to just... You now look, you see, because I've got wear boards, I can move all my pots all in one fell swoop. Okay, I'm not going to put them out in the sun, because that's too extreme. So you want to avoid extremes of, of heat against pots that are wet, because it causes, it sets up all sorts of stresses in the pot. These guys are here still. I'm going to let these just go bone dry. And I'm going to dip those in my white milky glaze. But I, 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 these guys, but I have to, I do that when they're bone dry, not when they are like these, still got moisture in. Okay, now I said I was going to do something else, didn't I? Quickly put that there. Yeah, over here, oh yeah, I've got a couple of pieces here that I want to do. Yeah, I've got a little, I'm in the middle of doing a little order for Sam out in the Netherlands. He wanted some, he wanted some tankards. So he's, uh, I've, uh, I've, I took my normal tankard design and he liked that idea, so we're making it into a small little espresso cup. I've yet to get on and really do those. I've kind of got um, bogged down again. <laughs> so I say I'm the coming. Don't panic. So yeah, I've got a bowl here, just a narrow-footed bowl, um, and then I've got a a star uh, t-ball so I actually wanted to do those let's just make sure we're, we're in the picture yeah okay so yeah sorry today's a bit of a clip of just life in the pottery as it is <laughs> oh that guy I noticed has got I did it around the base there, you see? That uh, thumbing around the base there. So actually that one I should do as well. All right, let's start off doing the, the tea bowl. I've got to do these, you see. Generally speaking, do this kind of glazing in two parts. So inside first, and then you let it dry back, and then you do the outside. Once you get into the routine of raw glazing, now you can do raw glazing, I can't say I have, I'm speaking from experience, but you can do raw glazing I would say, I can't see why not anyway, basically you can do it at cone 6, you could do it in oxidization, it's not really affecting the firing, it's just the, it's the, just the glaze application. Um, so. You can basically, I would say, you can do it at any temperature, in any kind of, whether it's in reduction or in uh, oxidization, whether it's in gas or, or, or electric, or wood, or... So, all you guys out there who are wondering, oh, I wonder if I could do that with my kill. Why, why is it that nobody said to us that we could, we could do this with our pots? We've always been brought up in this notion that we have to bisque fire everything, haven't we? Which is not so. 
All right, pouring in here, okay. What I'm gonna do is pour out and twist. Just missed a little bit there. That's it. Yeah, doing a wider form like that is a little bit more challenging. Okay, but we've, we've done it. So I've got to just wipe that back a bit there. Yeah, so... Don't be daunted by the, the raw glazing thing. Just, ha just have a go, do it. And you'll discover how simple it really is. And it'll, it's going to save you... It's going to save you a lot of time and frustration, a lot of, you know, I, 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 I've had, I was going to spray that, wasn't I? I have had pots come out of bisque firings that have been cracked and things, and I thought, oh, I don't even like bisque firing, you know, and I'm putting my pots in this kiln and they're coming out cracked before I even got to the, or they, they warp or they do something funny, you know. Maybe that's to do with my gas kiln. It's not ideal, I don't think, gas kilns for, um, for doing bisque firing anyway. I think they fire better in electric. It's kind of a more even heat. This is the thing, you see, you know, you, you, gas can be very, very strong, very fierce. And that's not something you really want on, on your pots. So... Yeah, but have a go at doing some raw glazing. Just do it. Just try it. And I'll tell you what, as an experiment for yourselves, just try using your regular glaze that you've been using to put on your bisque. Instead of which, just instead of applying it to the bisque, apply it to a dry, um, a dry piece of pottery, you know, raw and um, just make sure it's dry and just do it like I'm showing you here do the inside first wipe it off spray it on the outside and then leave it just to to dry back and then apply the glaze to the outside take that pot and put it in your kiln okay this is a little experiment you can do put it in your kiln and fire it and see what result you get <laughs> you might be pleasantly surprised and you will learn something from it. You know, you're not going to cause any damage or, you know. Now, you might find that you might just need to make a slight alteration to the glaze. You might need to add a little bit of bentonite to it, like 2% or something. Or you might not, you know. Quite honestly, you might not. Okay, folks, there's a little bit of <laughs> glaze mechanics, if you want to call it that. I don't know. I'm not really a very technical person when it comes to glazes. And I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, if there was a glaze that had one ingredient in it, I'd be happy, you know? I've got, I take no pleasure in all of this running around the mulberry bush trying to mix up complicated glazes like some people. So, yeah, just bear in mind that these pots, now that you've applied the, the the glaze and this glaze because it's 50% clay is is akin to a slip really okay just with a bit of oxide in it well it's got wood ash too so this glaze oh, I've shown you this in the past it is one ingredient one ingredient and I literally go outside I go over there in yonder field and I dig dirt and then I bring it in here, dry it off, put it through water, screen, you know, screen it, and then apply it directly onto the raw pot. And you've got a glaze. Okay, it's maybe not the, the, the nicest glaze in the whole wide world, but it's, 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 you're learning, you're doing something. You're thinking for yourself.
you see? That's what you've got to do. Think for yourself. Just don't buy everything ready-made off the shelf. That's like going down to McDonald's and stuffing yourself with, with junk food. Don't do that. Don't be a junkie potter. Be an innovative, wild, crafty potter. <laughs> Good. Thanks, folks. Good to be with you. Um, yeah, go to my website, check out dates for workshops, and if you're interested in leech treadle wheels, I am taking orders. I have two available that will be available in this batch that I'm making, having made now. So if, you're, if you want one, get hold of me, because they will sell. I will sell out of them. And then we'll have to wait probably till next year. So if you, if you are interested, give me a shout. Meanwhile... Keep practicing. And I will see you around. Bye for now.